Thank you, Rick. Once again, we have gathered rural municipal leaders from every part of the province. We've come all across Ontario to meet colleagues, learn from the experts, and connect with vendors. A special shout out to our incredible sponsors and exhibitors who have joined to be part of this incredible event. We are honoured by your support of this conference and we'll have more opportunities to say thank you. So again, thank you. Your Honour, the Honourable Elizabeth Doswell, the Honourable Robert Black, Chief Stacy Laforme for joining me today. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the 2020 Roma Conference and AGM. Each year, this forum grows bigger. This year, we have more than 1,300 participants at this conference. How about that? <laughs> also, there will be hundreds of delegation meetings held with the provincial ministries. I understand it's a close to 350, so that's pretty good too. That's a big achievement. This reflects the value in coming together. Rural communities have always been about neighbours helping one another. We know that when we help one another and work together, we're all stronger. At Roma, we're striving to create a platform where rural neighbours across Ontario can connect. The discussion, shared challenges, learn from one another's experiences, to have meaningful conversations with the provincial government. We have a stronger voice in the future of Ontario. Ontario's 444 municipalities, about 430, are rural or have rural areas inside their borders. By working together, we can keep rural Ontario moving forward. And we can keep Ontario moving forward because rural communities are key to the prosperous of Ontario. Roma is the voice of these communities. We make sure that municipal provincial matters are viewed through a rural lens. We bring a rural lens to the policy work done by the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, or as AMO as we all know it. When AMO and the province sit down to talk, Roma is at the table. We make sure our voice is heard and that our ambitions are understood. Ontario government is in the midpoint of its mandate. Work is well underway on many fronts. We appreciate many of the provincial ministers and staff that are with us today. Minister, thank you for being here with us. We look forward to hearing from the Premier tomorrow, and the province is an important partner for municipal governments, especially rural ones. We appreciate the province has listened and reset its approach on some of the key priorities. The government acted swiftly to protect farmers, livestock, food supply, from unique risks posed by people trespassing on farms. I want to thank Minister Hardiman and the government for listening to our concerns, providing new tools to keep our communities and farms safe. <laughs> you will be hearing from Minister Hardiman tomorrow as well. You will also be hearing from Minister Christine Elliott. I know there's a keen interest in the consultation on modernizing public health and emergency health service. Municipal governments have been delivering and co-funding these services for many years. We are active partners in the community well-being. We understand local needs, what works, we know what needs fixing. The minister appointed a special advisor, Jim Pine, to lead the consultation on the modernization services. Jim is familiar to many of us as the CEO of Hastings County. He is well respected and a trusted municipal public administrator. The government consultation is now underway. We appreciate the focus on this file. Many of you have sat with Jim and the ministry officials already. Others are working on submissions. The Roma board will be sitting down with Jim and the ministry to share the rule ends on these services during this conference. It is important that we consider a unique, circum unique circumstances of rural communities. One size does not fit all. Our residents spread across large areas, our communities are aging faster. At the same time, our property tax base is limited. 
Rome is focusing on maintaining these important services while protecting the property taxpayer for additional costs. We appreciate that the Minister Elliott and Jim Pine will also be taking part in our concurrent session on rural health care tomorrow. I want to thank the government for protecting formula-based Ontario Community Infrastructure Fund. Yes. This will be a great vehicle for additional provincial investment once the province's finances are back in order. Roads and bridges make up a significant portion of our rural budgets, and they are the lifeblood and key to the quality of life and economic growth. I want to thank the province for safeguarding OMPF investment for 2020. That funding is absolutely essential for sustainability of many rural and northern communities. The federal government has made an important investment in rural Ontario in 2019. We welcome the one-time doubling of the federal gas tax, which was administered by EMO and directly to the municipal governments. Permanent, yes. Permanent and predictable infrastructure funding is our top Roma priority. But infrastructure also means broadband infrastructure. <laughs> Connectivity lets us compete economically, building thriving communities, and it is key to moving Ontario forward. Broadband is essential to our quality of life, and our future depends on it. Connectivity should not be a problem for rural communities. It should be the solution. It can be the solution to help us overcome the challenges of great distances and small populations. There has been good progress and dedicated investment in broadband and cellular networks, both with the federal rural broadband strategy and $315 million in provincial funding. All providers need to work together to connect communities, and that is, is hard to serve but there's no other way to do that. You may remember last year at the conference, the Premier announced the government would revisit joint sever liability. Some issues were due earlier this fall, and I appreciate it will take time for the government to review the feedback. While there's no easy fix, there are other Canadian models. Nearly all other provinces have some kind of reasonable limit to municipal liability, while still making sure those who are injured are compensated fairly by the right parties. We're looking for relief from skyrocketing insurance premiums and the liability chill that happens all too often. Small communities do not have the growing tax base to meet these costs. Reforms won't cost the province a dime, but it would free up taxpayers' dollars for critical services we provide. S yes. Small towns will also benefit from less red tape. We're happy when the government said it wanted to cut red tape because we face plenty. We have small staff resources. We need to be focusing on serving our residents, not filling reports and forms to the province, especially when nobody reads them. Often too little purpose, and it is a waste of time and money. Another Roma priority is climate change. Many communities are impacted by high water levels. Municipal governments are on the front lines of extreme weather caused by climate crisis. All three orders of government must work in partnership to address these challenges. Municipal governments need long-term reliable funding for capital projects that will protect the environment. That includes water, wastewater, stormwater work. That also includes shoreline protection, dam maintenance, waste management and transit. And talk about shorelines. I've heard from Gary McLemore, the warden of, uh, of Essex County, talking about it. And then I heard from the Bay of Quinty and from the mayor yesterday or last night talking about the challenges they have. It's all over Ontario. It doesn't matter where you are. Our shorelines are being compromised. We need help. And the only way we can do it is working together. <laughs> I 
I want to also acknowledge the government's open for business measures. I believe rural communities are starting to see results for these efforts. We look forward to hearing from the Premier, Ministers and other, others on these important matters, both here at the conference and the year to come. I want to thank the government and all of you as well for participating in this forum. Not only does it give Roma a stronger voice at the table, but allows us to further direct support to rural communities. We continue to support the Teeny Tiny Summits, which allow small communities to gather regionally, share ideas, and learn from one another. During the past year, Roma has been pleased to support the Northern Colleagues in the Northwestern Ontario Municipal Association, the Federation of the on Northern Ontario Municipalities. Supporting our peer associations make us all stronger. As Roma Chair, I had the privilege to attend the NOMA, the FANOM conferences, as well as OSM conference, and the International Plowing Match. By visiting the different regions of our province, Roma can better understand their diverse needs and priorities. It allows us to look for common ground and find ways to work together to move all of our communities forward. Roma Board has also had a fruitful discussion with the Ontario Good Roads Association. We look forward to collaborating with them on shared priorities and also through our MOU, the Rural Ontario Institute, Roma is supporting research in rural Ontario to drive better solutions for innovation. I'm very pleased with Norm Rogetti, Executive Director of ROI, will be joining us shortly to talk about the recent research work. Topics are rooted in priorities that work and heard from rural stakeholders, like workforce shortages, working with Indigenous communities, and serving an aging population. The best way to keep moving rural Ontario forward is working in partnerships with others. And Roma is made up of a large at large, members of many whom serve on the AMO board, board's rural caucus, as well as zone representatives across the province. The integration of AMO allows us to have a stronger voice, greater access to provincial and policy expertise. I'm very proud this year that the Roma board decided to create a zone 10 from Northwestern Ontario. Yes. The board heard clearly this was a priority. We listened and we delivered. This will strengthen the number and the diversity of our northern voices on our board. The board is pleased to welcome Kevin Holland, the mayor of the township of Comney, who was acclaimed as Zone 10 representative when the nominations closed December 10th. As Mayor Holland joins me on stage, I would like to recognize my other members as they come forward as well. Mayor Chris White, Township of Guelph, Aramasa, who is our first Vice Chair and Zone 2 representative. Councillor Eli Shantiri, the City of Ottawa, second Vice Zone 8 representative. Councillor Dennis Krevitz, Municipality of Central Elgin, Zone 1 representative. Councillor Lloyd Ferguson, City of Hamilton, Zone 3, and uh, he has the uh, uh, homecoming hockey and uh, he's making it in Hamilton today, so he's doing his best to get back here. Pam Sani, the Township of Midden Hills, Zone 5 representative. Kim Love, Township of Madawaska Valley, Zone 6 representative. Cameron Wales, City of Brockville, Zone 7 representative. Bill Vrebosh, Councillor Bill Vrebosh, City of North Bay, Zone 9, and Amo Rural Caucus representative. Our other Rural Caucus representatives include Reeve Peter Eamon, the Town of Renfrew, Mayor Robin Jones, the Village of Westport, Mayor Jane O'Neill, Municipality of Marma and Lake, and Chris Ray, the CEO and Clerk of the Township of Johnson. It takes time to commit on the board like Roma. It's valuable and rewarding as well. I would like to acknowledge my colleagues for the hard work on behalf of the rural municipalities across Ontario. We've had an aggressive year. Thank you very much. <laughs> on behalf of the Roma Board, I want to thank you for coming. We have worked hard to create a program that would speak your priorities. I want to focus on the issues that matter to you and finding solutions so we can move forward into a prosperous future. In the days ahead, you will hear from provincial leaders and colleagues and experts. 
I, there is really something for everyone. I encourage you to listen, learn, and share. I hope you leave inspired. After you leave, you can keep up with Roma through the quarterly newsletter. Please keep an eye out for it. And you can also engage us with, on social media as well. In closing, let me say it's an honor to serve the Aroma Board, and I thank you for your support. Thank you. I would call on Afshin Majidi, the Executive Treasurer of Roma, to please come forward. Thank you, Alan. Good afternoon. It gives me great pleasure to present 2019 unaudited interim financial statements for Rural Ontario Municipal Association. Additional print copies of these statements are available at LAS AMO booth in the exhibition hall. Most of Roma's revenues are realized through your attendance at the Roma Annual Conference. The net proceeds of the conference registration goes toward assisting the Roma board in representing rural interests. As Alan Thompson, our Roma chair, alluded to, last year in 2019, that included representation and advocacy at a variety of committees, meetings, workshops, including planning of this conference. You can see, yes, and it's here this slide, it's a highlight of the activities that the uh, board undertook, including eight formal uh, board meetings. Roma designated $40,000 over four years, uh, two th years 2019 to year to 2022, in support of teeny tiny summits across Ontario as internally restricted reserve to ensure quality programming and keeping the cost of attendance affordable for rural uh, participants. In 2019, Roma Board also approved some additional promotional, communication, and sponsorship activities during the year. The approved expenditures came from uh, accumulated reserves for approximately 30,000. Roma ended 2019 fiscal year in a solid financial position with $573,188 in reserves to start the new fiscal year. This is my report, it was a short one, hopefully everyone is happy with that. <laughs> At this point, uh, I would like to ask for a first mover to move the report, please. And please state your name for the record. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Chris Ray, and the second there, Robin Jones. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This concludes the formal portion of the AGM. Hopefully it was short enough, thank you. Thank you, Afshin. I am pleased to introduce Norman Rett Gatley. Norman is a dedicated, a great deal of his career is working with municipalities as a planner on award-winning sustainable community program and with the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs, supporting the rural community and economic development. His role as Director of Policy and Stakeholder Engagement, Norm is currently the Executive Director of the Rural Ontario Institute, better known as ROI. Please put your hands together and welcome Norm to the stage. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, just wanted to acknowledge that um, on behalf of my board that uh, the Royal Ontario Institute um, greatly values the working relationship we've been able to establish uh, with Roma and uh, it's uh, my pleasure to share with you some of the initiatives we've been working on this year. So, uh, here we go. 
There we go. So for those of you who, uh, who don't know the Royal Ontario Institute, just a, a quick blurb about who we are. We're an independent, small nonprofit organization. Uh, we're a charitable organization. Um, we have a very broad mandate, as you can see, of developing leaders and facilitating collaboration on issues facing rural and, and northern Ontario. With that kind of mandate and um, a small footprint as an organization, everything we do, we, we do in partnership. We, we do very little working alone. We, we like it that way. Um, but we really do count on uh, partnerships, funders, subscribers, sponsors, a lot of, a lot of organizations uh, we work with. And I think you'll see that reflected in, in my remarks here today. So um, I'm going to spend a fair bit of time talking about uh, the Rural Ontario Foresight Papers. Um, there's uh, six papers that uh, have been published uh, just uh, this past October. So they're kind of warm off the press, I guess you could say. Um, and they're available to you um, online. Um, in the Foresight Papers, um, something we started back in uh, 2017 with the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing Money. Um, we identify priorities, your priorities, and uh, we commission experts to look ahead at what the trends um, are showing for rural communities and offer some directions uh, on some solutions and uh, their perspectives are in the papers. So I just want to say that none of the, uh, the opinions of the authors are necessarily those of the, the province. They're sort of independently done. They're really the, the perspectives of the authors in these papers. Um, as part of um, preparing the papers, we also have a partnership with the Northern Policy Institute. And uh, they always put a northern lens on the um, issues that the, that the authors deal with. And they've also uh, been kind enough to translate the, the papers into French, so um, they're accessible to our Francophone Ontarians. So before I, I describe the topics that are in this uh, year's suite of papers, uh, I just wanted to reflect on, on why we, we did them and what their purpose is. And that context really is that most of the rural challenges um, that you're dealing with are, are persistent, um, they're long-term, they're probably out last year term on council, and, and they're complex, uh, wicked type problems. So that reality means that the way that we deal with those challenges has to be um, different than the way that we deal with other types of challenges. So you do have relatively simple problems that you're solving at, at local councils, you know, getting money for, for that bridge that's needed and that sort of thing, and I don't want to minimize those kind of problems, but they're knowable problems that we have lots of experience um, solving. And we have complicated problems, problems which are really a stack of other simple problems. Uh, and then we have complex problems. And in complex problems, um, there's a lot of influences, there's a lot of factors at play, and as local government leaders, community leaders, um, you're not solely um, in charge of those kind of influences, and in some cases have, will have a hard time um, affecting them. So wicked problems or complex problems uh, is a kind of theories that developed, uh, you know, in the 70s actually, and these are the 10 attributes that, uh, that they say are associated with wicked problems. I just want to draw your attention to the two in the bottom right there, um, the ones that speak to straddling organizational boundaries and that there are often conflicting agendas. We just think about opioids and opioid addiction, for example. We've got those that are advocating for you know, harm reduction and we've got those that are you know, trying to keep the drugs off the street in the first place. You know, both types of solutions are um, probably useful, um, but they are in some cases conflicting agendas and those are hard pr uh, problems to, to work with but what it means is that um, in order to solve these problems and nibble away at their edges, if, if, if you like, we need lots of perspectives in the room and we need lots of people with different answers um, at the table. So your job um, as councillors um, becomes a little bit different. So I, I just this, I'm sharing this list, which I, I don't necessarily expect you to be able to read, but back in 2016, uh, before we did the 2017 Foresight Papers, we canvassed you uh, as uh, rural councillors with uh, Roma support, and th that was the list of 20 issues at the time, and we picked uh, six from that list. And I, I just, you know, many of them are, are, are challenging. We still 
are facing them, and this is you know aging population, housing affordability, transportation, those kind of complex problems. Um, we did another survey, um, this time a little bit broader, with uh, civil society organizations and, and rural businesses, as well as rural councillors, just before the provincial election. And uh, this was the list of 20 uh, community priorities that, that came up. And again, uh, long-term complex problems, access to quality medical services, services for an aging population, uh, addictions and mental illness, youth employment, underemployment, long-term persistent challenges. So that's the premise. And I, I think most of you would um, agree with me that um, addressing complex, wicked problems demands collaboration. We heard that from many of our speakers uh, here this uh, today already. Um, you need multiple perspe perspectives, you need new ideas, you need experiment and innovation, and we can learn from each other as we manage through these issues. So in this kind of scenario, the role of council and local government leaders is not to solve the problem working alone. So your issues really are how to engage those other stakeholders in, in your community. And I would venture to say that it's not just your community, it's regional and provincial as well. So uh, these are the six topics that we that emerged from those uh, 2018 priorities that, that we decided to commission the papers on. The first is uh, on rural labor force challenges. Um, Carol Simpson, who is a workforce planning uh, board executive director, worked with 13 other workforce planning boards across the province to characterize the problem and to collect stories of uh, initiatives that were underway in different parts of the province. So that's what you would uh, find in that paper. And I think it's reflective of all the papers in that um, you're not going to find a silver bullet solution in any of these uh, papers. They're more um, directed at you know some directions that we could follow and highlighting innovation that's occurring already in our rural communities that we can learn from. Uh, the second paper is on, on uh, water quantity. It's really actually about uh, flooding and uh, the expectation of more extreme weather events. And it, it's um, primarily, I would say, a, a call to action um, on, the, on the flooding and climate crisis that we're facing. Access to quality medical services, written by um, John Hovenberg at the Center for Rural and Northern Health Research, um, speaks up about uh, telemedicine advances and um, remote monitoring, um, and uh, also about the School of um, Northern Medicine and how much of a, a positive impact that's had in, in northern communities in uh, growing the rural health practitioners that uh, are going to serve remote and, and, and northern uh, stakeholders. He actually makes the case in his paper that uh, we in rural southern Ontario can also benefit from, uh, from that kind of approach, so interesting uh, possibilities there. Um, Mark Skinner, who's at Trent University, um, surveys the landscape in terms of services for an aging population. Um, again, uh, fi finding uh, people that are tackling those, those issues in a meaningful and integrated way um, in, in rural Ontario. Um, Dwayne Nashkawa, uh, he's uh, the chief executive officer up in uh, Maple Sing First Nation. And he has a paper that uh, really reflects on his personal experience in building a a good working relationship with the city of North Bay around uh, infrastructure issues and um, draw some lessons learned from that, some principles that he thinks might be uh, applicable in, in other contexts. So uh, Dwayne's paper is, is useful, I think. Um, and I just want to mention that um, Mayor Robin Jones, who's uh, on the Roma board, came to the, the Foresight paper launch in, in Coburg back in October. and. Um, we went through this this list of um, six papers after she heard the Foresight paper authors summarize their papers. And she, she drew a, a direct link to things that were going on in, in Westport, in um, Leeds and Grenville, uh, where she is from, and um, really sp uh, gave a very encouraging testimony to the relevance of, of these papers for, for her community. And I, I hope you would uh, find some meaning in them as well, because I, I know you're all involved in uh, these kinds of these kind of questions, and the last paper is uh, by Don Eaton. Uh, he um, tackles this uh, energy use in the rural householder. We, we'd identified cost of energy as um, 
a big problem, but also climate change. And so he, he brings the two together, talking about our housing stock and what we can do about that in reducing our, our, our carbon footprint and has some um, ideas in there for how municipalities can help. He kind of reflects those well on why community energy plans maybe haven't had the kind of impact that we might have hoped from them and, and some ideas for how we can maybe make them more successful and impactful going forward. So um, those are the, the foresight papers. Um, they are all downloadable from our website for free, but I have some hard copies if you're, you're old school and want to bring something back uh, with you, you can drop by our booth and uh, I can supply you those. Uh, um, but the, the Institute's um, been also at work on some other kinds of things which I believe are, are resources for you as you engage in your local dialogues and their um, programs and projects we do that, that, that highlight innovation across rural Ontario that provide you with accessible statistical analysis. And also um, we do focus on uh, leadership programs. You probably know our advanced agricultural leadership program. That's our flagship. But um, we have some other um, youth focused ones that I'm gonna touch on here quickly. Um, so this is um, yeah, back in the summer with, uh, with OMAF for support, we, we did a series of webinars on uh, rural entrepreneurship. And um, those are the four themes that were uh, of those webinars. I just want to point out the, the diversity of types of stakeholders that, uh, that were featured in that. We've got, you know, nonprofit, um, civil society organizations working with youth. We've got um, like the Community Innovation Hub is a you know, United Church of Canada initiative looking at social enterprises and repurposing uh, old church spaces. We've got uh, community futures organizations, county economic development. It does take a lot of different types of organizations to address those wicked complex problems and I think you can, you can see that reflected there. So all, the, all those webinars are archived and available for you if you want some inspiring stories to, to kickstart a conversation in your community. Similarly, with uh, Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing Money, we were, um, as part of our broader Measuring Rural Community Vitality Project, we identified three communities that were addressing complex long-term problems through collaborative impact initiatives. So these three are case studies, demonstration projects. Um, the first is led by a public health unit uh, for Middlesex County. Uh, the second by a community health center in Midland Penetang, addressing social isolation through community engagement, showing some real uh, significant um, progress. And the county foundation in Prince Edward County uh, with a suite of initiatives around uh, food insecurity. So again, you know, as a local government leader, it's not always the local government that's leading the charge. You know, you, can, you need to get behind uh, your other stakeholders in, in, in your community. As they say, lead, follow, or get out of the way. Um, uh, statistical analysis, um, we have a long-standing working relationship with OMAFRA support to provide data. And it's published in, in fact sheet format throughout the year. And if you're a subscriber, you would get notice of, of those fact sheets and um, you can get them electronically. But we also, through our Roma partnership, are able to provide that to decision makers at Queen's Park and our MPPs and, and so on. So if you're in need of statistical analysis, there are rationalists um, among us who <laughs> need the evidence. Um, that's a great uh, source of information. So um, don't hesitate to, to go to the website and find that if you need it. And so lastly, just want to touch on these uh, uh, capacity building programs. And we had the good fortune to be able to work with 10 communities this past summer. Uh, placing interns um, who were themselves focused on, on youth engagement in, in, in your community. So uh, it was a very impactful project. It was enabled by the Ministry of Municipal Affairs. If um, we'd like to continue it because of the great feedback we had, um, and we have a, a Trillium uh, funding application um, under consideration right now, we will know by March whether or not um, we're funded to continue this work, in which case we'll be looking for uh, new community partners. So, so watch our, our, uh, our website and our newsletter for that. Um, those are the interns. Um, we are uh, launching a new program uh, this year with OMAF for support. It's uh, rural uh, change makers, we call it at this point. And um, 
we are looking for four uh, partner communities to pilot this initiative uh, with us. So if you're interested in uh, a program focused on young adults mobilizing community action, we, we, we prepare and, and orient them for this process uh, through some leadership training. Um, we'd like to hear from you. So you can drop by our booth and um, uh, let us know and uh, hopefully maybe we can uh, link up on that one. Finally, um, just wanted to mention a, a housing conference that's upcoming. So one of our roles as an institute is to try to highlight good practice and uh, increase learning opportunities. We are partnering with uh, the Alberta Rural Development, another um, sort of sister organization in Alberta, to host a, um, a national gathering of, on uh, rural and remote housing in Guelph at the end of May. Um, we have a call for uh, presenters out right now, so if you've got an interesting uh, housing initiative underway in your community, um, we'd like to hear from you and uh, put you on stage at the, at the conference and uh, otherwise uh, would invite you to, to come and learn from people across Canada that are, are working on, on rural housing issues. So, so that's it really. Um, just want to um, highlight that, that almost all of this stuff is on our website, so, um, but um, I'd also be happy to talk to you to at our booth today. And thank you to all our, our partners and contributors and sponsors. Thank you, Norm, for all the good work you do.